Hey everybody, welcome to the training tonight. My name's Trevor and we are talking about uh, shareasale.com, uh, which is another giant affiliate network um, similar to what we've been talking about over the past few weeks. We've been talking about cj.com. We've been talking about Linkshare, which is Rakuten. Um, we, we, we haven't really talked about it, but we will be talking about clickbank.com. Um, Oh, well, there, I mean, there's lots of these networks out here, so we're going to just try to take them one at a time. We're talking about ShareASale today, and ShareASale is a good, well-known network. In fact, these guys have been around for about 16 years because they opened up back in 2000. They're based out of out of Illinois somewhere. I think they're in Chicago. And uh, good good affiliate uh, network, for sure. Just Just so we're all clear, these guys are a network of of companies that want people like you to promote their products. So, for example, I don't know if you see this right here, but how many of you guys have heard of uh, Zulily? Or there's Adidas right there as well. Or Gymboree. These are probably brands you've heard of, right? Big name brands. Well, their affiliate program is managed right here within share a sale uh, nflshop.com you saw just pop up on the banner right here um they're managed through share a so if if i want access to these companies i have to have an account here at share sale and these companies basically come in and the way it works is i don't think i've explained this in the past but they come to share a sale so let's let's pretend i'm a giant retail brand and I want people to promote my products online, and I'm willing to pay a commission if they'll promote my stuff. Well, I could come to Share a Sale, and I could pay them a fee. And I'm not sure what these companies pay Share a Sale, but they probably pay them somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, thousand bucks a year, maybe more, depending on the size of the company. And and I would pay that money to Share a Sale, and then my company, my banners, my links would be here. For other people to promote. So if you had a big enough company, like if your if your drop shipping business was big enough, you could sign up with Share a Sale, and and you'd pay them a fee, and then you would set up an affiliate program through your own company, and other people would go out and promote your products, your 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 banners, um, for some type of a commission. So they're just an aggregate of companies like that. And and signing up with Share a Sale really is about the same as as, as any of these other companies. Um, you would you would sign up as an affiliate. If I were a company looking to have my links promoted, I would sign up as a merchant. Okay. Yeah, these are recognizable names, aren't they? Cheryl. Cheryl says she buys from Zulily a fair bit. Um, uh, the answer, Sharon, to that question as to whether or not you have to have a website to join these is yes. Yes, you definitely do. Um, these guys aren't going to accept your application unless you have a website already. Uh, this is a pay per action kind of thing, Catherine. So uh, people have to click and buy in order for you to get paid. Um, pay per click so far is really only for uh, Google AdSense, or, or at least that's the only pay per click network um, we've we've talked about thus far. So if I want to create an account here, right? Um, which, and by the way, I mean, I, I won't scroll through this too much, but you'll see under popular merchants, they, they show some of their more popular companies they work with. They've got home and garden merchants, um, entirely pets, build direct joy bird, one Kings lane, which is very popular, right? A lot of you guys have heard of that in the, in the decor space, fashion merchants, um, Right, Jane.com, Trunk Club, Swimsuits for All. You've got green merchants for green products and eco-friendly products, so on and so forth. Wedding, education. So they've got a ton of different companies. Probably something that would fall along with, with almost any niche that you guys you know, may be doing a website on. So pretty good group. So if I go here to um, – oh, I, I'd encourage you to do this too. You see this link up here at the top? says, what is affiliate marketing? Let me just scroll in just a little bit here so you guys can see better. What is affiliate marketing? This explains it in a little like one minute video. I'm not going to show it to you right now. You guys can watch this on your own. 
Um, but I thought this would be a nice way for you guys to, to better understand how this affiliate marketing stuff works. Um, so we want to join as an affiliate. So you go to affiliate, sign up here, and I can click on this link and it's going to take me through a sign up process. Now, I'm not going to show you step by step how to sign up. It's very easy to do. They do ask you some questions that you may not know the answer to. Just do your very best. Answer, answer as much as you can. But what I can say about these applications is that they absolutely will ask you for your website address. And they won't approve you unless you have a website. So let's, let's be clear. Um, have a website before you sign up with these guys. Okay? They have a little review team that will actually look at your website and decide whether or not it's something that they feel like is, is adequate to, to have their banners and stuff uh, promoted on. Um, they're not real picky about the website. So if you have a blog that's only got like four or five blog posts and it's just kind of just barely being built, uh, you, you still can come in here and, and for the most part get uh, some type of a membership set up. It doesn't cost you anything. You're not going to spend any more any money here. Um, they, they boast that they have close to 4,000 different affiliate companies that you could potentially partner with. Okay. All right. Let me show you questions about this so far, guys. Are we, are we on the same page with share sale here? I mean, you, you, some of you guys have seen my trainings on link share, the, the Rakuten network, and then, um, CJ, and it's all kind of the same thing. I'm going to log in. Uh, to an account here that I actually just created today so you guys can kind of see how this works. And uh, I'll, I'll show you kind of what it looks like. I'm going to go affiliate login. This one I, I, I literally created just this morning so you guys can see what a new account looks like. When you first log in, um, you're going to see this little attention, needs attention. It says, our records indicate that we do not have a required W-9 on file for your account. In order to ensure timely payment, please click here. So if I, if I were to click here, um, you, you, get this little, uh, you get this little explanation that says, hey, if you earn more than $600 in a calendar year, um, you're going to receive a 1099 from share a sale. Okay? Um, and that's just the way it works because they're going to report, they, they are required to report that you're making money so that, so that you can't go in, go in here, make a small fortune and then nobody knows about it. They're, they're required to let the IRS know how much they're paying people. So if you make more than 600 bucks, they, they're required to send you a 1099 and, um, there's some tax stuff that you'll want to do here before you can really get paid through a uh, share of sales. It's not a big deal. Um, we can help you do this, but. Anyway, I wanted to point that out to you. Um, okay, so the first question is, you know, how do how do I go about finding good affiliate um, companies to work with in here? And I always recommend they've got this prepare for upcoming holidays thing right here, which I think is awesome because a lot of affiliate marketing can be can be timely promotion of relevant offers. So for example, we've got Valentine's Day coming up. If I click on the Valentine's Day link, um, you know, it'll it'll take me in and show me various Valentine's Day affiliates that I could that I could work with, right? Or or St. Patrick's Day um or or whatever, right? Halloween. So you can you can sort of filter by holiday if you want to. Um, the way I prefer most though, if I'm if I'm looking for affiliates within their network, I go here to merchants and I go to search for merchants right here on the left. Okay. So merchants and then search for merchants. I can click on these little binoculars. And it's gonna take me into this screen where I can I can start looking for um merchants to work with. Okay. So somebody let's just do something on the fly here. Um I haven't prepared this, so I'm gonna ask you guys. Give me some kind of a niche that we can try to research here. Something a little more on the broad side so we can come up with something. Um, we'll see if anything's available here that would be relevant to maybe one of you guys. Fishing. Pam, you said it first, so I'm going to take yours first. Pam says fishing. Okay. So let's see if they've got anything related to phishing. Now, there's two ways I can search. Let me zoom in just a little bit further so you guys can see this better. 
I can search either looking for merchants having to do with fishing, right? Or I can search for individual products having to do with fishing. Well, let's do merchants first and see what this comes up with. Okay, hold on. It says no, I don't want to do a search. There we go. All right, fishing. Okay. So here's the results of our of our search. Um a lot of results. There's a lot of products that have to do with fishing. So I could click on the product results or the merchant results and I can scroll down and I'll see a whole ton of uh fishing affiliates that I can work with. Now, you're going to notice a couple of things, guys. Look at their commission structure right here. Um, this company right here, Fishing Books and Videos, which, by the way, I can look at their website right here if I want to. This is fishingbooksandvideos.com. It's kind of a crappy-looking site, to be honest. <laughs> but there it is. They pay 8% per sale on their orders. Um, they have a hundred and day or hundred and eighty day cookie policy. Now somebody explain that to me real quick. What does that mean exactly? They have a cookie policy of hundred and eighty days. Something that we've talked about briefly in some of our other trainings when we've been talking about affiliate networks. You're you're gonna see a lot of these have different um intervals of time. Ninety day cookie policy for um essayfishing.com by the way, I can right click on them and, and open up a link for these guys. This looks a little more legit. Okay, SA Fishing. Yeah, they so in other words, they keep the info for 180 days. So let's say for example, I decided to set up with these guys, right? And by the way, if I wanted to set up, I could click join program right here. So let's say I join their program and they approve me. Great. Then I then I go out and I, I grab one of their affiliate banners and I slap it on my site, right? I put up one of their banners. Let's say some random person, Pam, let's say you, since you gave us the example, let's say Pam is out there on Google and, and Pam does a little Google search and she finds my website. And she sees my banner when she comes to my website and she clicks on that banner and it takes her over to these guys' website, okay? Fishing books and videos. And let's say let's say um the the customers here and they decide, you know what, I don't want to buy anything. Nice looking site, but I'm I'm gonna jet. I don't have time for this right now, and they click out and they leave the site. But let's say they bookmark it or they write it down on a pen or on a notepad next to their desk and they say, yeah, that's a site I want to visit later on. So they, you know, so they write that in and, uh, and then, you know, let's say a month later, 30 days later, they come back to the site, but they don't do it through your banner. They just go back to the site because they, they bookmarked it or they thought to go back to it. You're still going to get paid if they buy at that point. Okay. Cause it's only within 30 days. But if they did that, you know, a year later, you you wouldn't get paid for it. So that's what that's what cookies are. When you refer somebody over to one of these affiliate sites, they don't have to buy on the spot for you to make money, but they have to buy within their cookie policy. And in in this case, 180 days, 90 days, 60 days for these guys. This one, no policy. You'll always get paid if you referred somebody there. 120 days. This one's only seven days, right? So you can see those different cookie policies and how those work. So you can kind of browse through here, look at the commissions, check out the sites, and see which ones you want to set up with. And and when you're ready, join their program, right? So if I come down here and click Join Program, It'll 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 take me to a little application for this person individually or for this company individually, and I can try to join their program. Okay. 
I guess that's the one thing as we as we continue to learn about new affiliate networks that I really love is the fact that they make it so easy for me to quickly come in, find relevant products or relevant companies and quickly join. I mean, I could I could go down here and join five or six different fishing affiliates within minutes. Um which is pretty cool. You can't really do that very very well. Yeah, you know, if the if the if the cookie expires, right? So back to our example earlier, if if I've got a website and I've posted a banner to let's say um deadwoodknives.com. Let's look at this one. Okay, here you go. Deadwoodknives.com. So let's say I've got a website, I post a banner for deadwoodknives.com on it. Pam comes and she finds my site, she sees my banner, clicks on it and comes and visits Deadwood Knives. She has 30 days. Um no, I'm sorry, 180 days uh to buy from these guys for me to get paid. On the 181st day that she doesn't buy from them, I'm not going to I'm not going to get paid or and she does buy at that point, I'm not going to get paid for it. But if she if she finds my site again, and sees that banner again and clicks on it, it's gonna reset that 180 day grace period. So it's not like you have to reapply to, to, to become a member again. You're always gonna be set up with these guys. It's just, it, it depends on uh, the visitor. One click from a banner of mine gives me 180 days to collect commissions off of that person buying from that site. On the 181st day, no more. They'd have to find the banner again. If that makes, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm explaining that very well. Does that make sense? You guys following that? Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds like most of you guys are getting that. Okay. You know, it's hard about these webinars. I never know. Sometimes I've got 40, 40 plus of you here, and you know, it's hard to know who's understanding what. If we were all here in the same room and I could actually read your faces, I might. I might be able to get a better idea. <laughs> okay. Um, um, no, Kathy. So yeah, let me let me just make sure this is this is really clear. Kathy just asked. Um, so does this mean when it expires, the banner is removed from the site? No, the banner will always stay on your site unless you physically take it off. What we're just talking about for the person who clicks on the banner, they have 180 days to buy from that site for you to get for you to get commissions. Because the point is, when somebody clicks on that banner and you refer them over to this this Deadwood Knives, who's to say they're going to buy that same day that they clicked on your banner? They may not. In this case, in this case, we may say Pam saw this site really like the knives, but it's like, you know what? Christmas isn't for a few months. I'll come back here later. And so what Pam does then is she jots down deadwoodknives.com and, and puts it on a, a notepad next to her computer or puts it in her phone or saves it as a bookmark. And, and she's going to come back and buy later, um, but she's not going to buy right, right away. Well, as long as it's within the cookie grace period, you're going to get paid. If she buys outside of that, you're not going to get um, you're not going to get the commission. Okay. I'm reading your comments right now, guys. The banner that's placed on your site is always active. You don't have to renew anything. So I, this this must not be very clear. I mean, I I don't know how else to explain this, guys. If I'm an affiliate of Deadwood Knives, right? I have a website and I'm going to promote their stuff and I'm going to put their banner on my site. I do that one time and I'm done. And every single time somebody comes in and clicks on that banner, I'm going to get paid. That's it. Okay, the policy with cookies only says that the person who clicks on my banner has within 180 days to buy for me to get a commission. That's it. That's all that means. 
unfortunately, it's not clear to everybody. So I know some of you guys get it and some of you don't. Okay, um, so I should I should do I should probably do something on cookies another time, and this is this is kind of beyond the scope of what we're talking about right now. But may, maybe another time we can focus just on what cookies means and 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 maybe do some examples of that. The key here is just finding good affiliates. So let's go back out to where we were just a second ago, to that to that page, the the binoculars page. So if we go merchants. And then we go search for merchants. Um, then we're going to come right here. And some of you guys may not want to search via keyword. You can just browse by category and see if you can find something related to your niche right here. So you can do something in clothing or business, automotive. You've got education, financial, games and toys, right? Gourmet foods, green products, legal, mil military, et cetera, et cetera, w weddings hosting, travel, blah, blah, blah. You, you can look through this and see if there's anything relevant that you want to promote. Now, if you, have a, if you have a camping or an outdoor, let's say a fishing affiliate type site, you don't necessarily have to put fishing affiliates on your site. You could put an affiliate for web hosting or you could put an affiliate for um, gourmet foods, but it wouldn't make a lot of sense, right? You probably want to keep most of your advertising pretty much related to whatever your niche is. That that should be that should be what you're doing because really, you know, there's a, there's a reason why certain television commercials come on at at various times and and during certain programs. We want targeted advertising, right? You see you see you see a lot of that when you're when you're watching television. If if you're watching a show that's primarily watched by men versus women, the advertising is going to be geared more towards men. And and you should take the same approach. If if you've got readers who are outdoors type people, that are survivalists, that are that are camping people, let's keep our affiliate ads related to those things. Okay, share a sale is just one more opportunity and one more network to do that with. All right. All right. So I, I don't think I'm going to cover anything more on share a sale. This is really just an introduction to it. I'd encourage all of you guys who have sites with information and you're ready for affiliates to go and create an account. It's really easy. It'll take a day to activate and then you can come in here and start to apply to, to all of share of sales, um, you know, different affiliate programs. Okay. Um, let me just read through any last questions or comments and then, and then we'll finish up. Believe it or not tonight, we're not going to go a full hour, which is good. I'm sure some of you guys will appreciate that. Okay, so Elizabeth, that's an interesting idea. So let's say, going back to our example, let's say I've posted a banner to Deadwood Knives, right? Let's go back to Deadwood Knives. I've posted a banner to Deadwood Knives on my site, and Pam finds my website through a Google search, and she comes in and she clicks on my banner. And she loves what she sees, but she doesn't buy right then. And then let's say she comes back a week later and then decides to buy and she buys something. Well, as long as the cookie policy is above and beyond seven days, I'll still get a percentage. I'll still get a cut from that sale. But then let's say Pam tells her friend about Deadwood Knives, um, just tells her over the phone or tells her through a text message. I'm not going to get credit for the friend's, um, the friend's purchase her friend would have to find that banner through my site and click on it for me to get credit for that. That's how that works anyway. Hope, hopefully that makes sense. Simone asks, do you have, you have to make a disclaimer in your blog that you're going to get paid if they buy one of the products you display on your blog? Um, you actually do. And we talked a few weeks ago I don't know if you remember this or not. It's on that affiliate list, but we talked about how you have to create an, an about us page, a contact page, and a policies page. Inside your policies page, you're going to have something that says that you do, in fact, get compensated for products that you recommend. Um, that's actually a, a law that you're, you're supposed to um, divulge that information. 
Now, how many people go in and actually read the fine print of a policies page? Probably very few, but yeah, you're supposed to do it for sure. You know, Sharon, that's up to you. Sharon just asked, you know, when it comes to doing a website, do you do one yourself or do you have somebody do it for you? And, you know, it, that just depends on you altogether and your time. It's sure nice in a perfect world if you have money to invest to pay somebody to do your site. Um, really speeds things up and it gets done and it gets done well. But at the same time, you know, there's a cost to that in most cases. And in a, a well-designed well done website's not going to be cheap. So I would just encourage you to, you know, of course, discuss that with your coach, right? Um, discuss that with us. And, and I think that's different for everybody. I really do. Lauren says, okay, one more time. We just need to have a current website to start affiliate marketing banners. Correct. You, you have to have an active website that's got some useful content on it. Um, do you need to have a blog as well? Not necessarily, but generally speaking, for affiliate marketing to work well, most people do it on a blog. So if you have an e-commerce store, you can still put affiliate ads on your e-commerce store, but it's going to make more sense to have a separate informational blog. Most people that make big money in affiliate marketing um, are doing it off of some kind of a blog. Yeah, um, Barbara, AdSense pays on every click, every click. So when you compare and contrast affiliate networks and, and affiliate banners, this kind of affiliate marketing to AdSense, AdSense is a little more dependable because every single time you get clicked on, you definitely are going to get paid. Um, these are more like every time the ad gets clicked on, you might get paid depending on what the person does. Now the commissions are better in this than AdSense. I mean, imagine if, you know, you saw some of the things here in ShareSale we were looking at a few minutes ago. Some some of the commissions are, are pretty high and some are a little lower than others, right? This one right here, overnightglasses.com is 30% per sale. This one's 15% per sale. 10%, 30% per sale, so on and so forth, 20% per sale. You, so you're going to make a lot more off of these when people do buy, whereas when you're getting paid per click, usually it's just a small amount per, per click. Yeah, Bracky, once once you've got a good blog page developed, share a sale would be great. You bet. Share a sale, CJ, Link Share, all of these networks that we've been talking about. You bet. Michelle, in your case, uh, you're welcome to so when we're discussing these different networks, you're welcome to apply. If you have a website and you're ready to monetize that website, you're welcome to apply to these networks. And you're you're definitely welcome to start applying for the individual programs within the networks and placing ads on your site. But but can I give you guys all just a word of advice? I, I know a lot of you guys, when you get to this stage, you're so excited about placing ads on your site that you forget one of the biggest rules here. And that's that we don't create a site for ads, right? That should be a secondary thing. In fact, you you don't want so many ads that when people look at your site, it looks like one giant advertisement and the content becomes secondary to it. I've used this analogy before, but it's a lot like sitting down and watching, you know, your favorite TV show, right? Um, my wife, for example, she loves to watch Dancing with the Stars or, you know, American Idol or or whatever, right? And I always hate watching it with her because we'll sit down to watch it and, an hour long show is usually like, I don't know, 40 minutes, 35 minutes worth of actual show. And the other 25 minutes is commercials, right? Seems like every time you sit down to watch, you're just watching a commercial. 
And that drives people crazy, crazy enough to some people, crazy enough to where some people won't watch it like me, unless I've recorded it or I've DVR'd it. Right. Cause I, I want to skip through the commercials. It's the same principle on one of these sites. If somebody gets to your site and you've got banners at the top and banners at the bottom and banners in your text and it's, it's, it's going to look like crap. People aren't going to click on the ads. You need to be a little more subtle about it. Don't, don't have too many banners and advertisements everywhere. Work them in. And, and I don't know how much. You need to look at your site and, and decide for yourself. I mean, you can tell if you've got too many banners because it's just going to look that way. Uh, let's see. What else did you guys say? Um, yeah, Kathy. So, I mean... In what case would it make sense to have banners on an e-commerce site? Well, it's, it's, it's if you have an e-commerce site that, that has some holes in the inventory. You know, um, several of you guys, when you first get started, may have some holes in your inventory. And you can fill those holes by either doing some retail drop shipping on your site or by building in some affiliate banners. And, and that would be appropriate, sure. Ed, a, an informational blog, Ed just asked, what's an informational blog? It, really, an informational blog is just a website that's full of different articles about a certain topic. So it's not a website that sells anything. It's just an informational site. For example, the, the strawberry site that we've been talking about um, as we've been doing this series. I think the best platform for affiliate marketing is WordPress. So if you're thinking about doing a blog for affiliate marketing, WordPress is your best option. If you're doing um, an e-commerce site, we usually like to do Blogger as, as an option, but WordPress works for that as well. Yeah, Kirk, it's about creating quality content. It really is. Can you imagine sitting through a program like American Idol and you absolutely hated it, right? There's no way you would sit and watch that show with 40% of the airtime being commercials if you hated the show. You wouldn't watch it at all. And that's the same thing with one of these sites. If you have crap content and that crap content is full of banners and advertisements, you're not going to make any money. If you've got good content and then you've got advertising peppered within that, you can make some serious money. And there's, there's a fine line there. I think we will, Michelle. Michelle just asked if we'll ever do a training on ad placements on the site. Absolutely. Absolutely. We've kind of been working over the past through few weeks to, to get through some of the networks and make sure you guys have plenty of options for ads. Um, we'll be talking about ad placements and ad analytics um, as, as we continue in this series. Yep, less is more indeed. Um, yeah, the process is the same, Kathy, on Blogger. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, I think we've gone plenty tonight. I, I sure appreciate you being here, and I, I hope... I hope you're enjoying this webinar series. You know, for some of you guys who are newer in the program right now, this stuff probably seems a little over your head and not super relevant. But I know as you get a blog set up and as you get a, your website going and as you get working on a niche with your coach, using this stuff is going to be great. Um, and it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot of fun. Money aside, doing this can be a lot of fun. I think you guys will enjoy it. So stick with it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and email you guys all out a little survey tonight. They they want us to start surveying you guys to see what kind of feedback and, and uh, I guess, positive and negative you can give about our trainings. Um, and we'd, we'd sure love some, some honest and, and fair feedback. So I'll send that little survey out to all of you guys. And uh, if you'll fill that out for us, that would be great. Um, Okay. I think we're good to go. Thanks everybody for being here. We'll see you guys next time. Okay.